come on and change everyone welcome back to my channel um, I hope you're having a amazing and wonderful day uh, in this video tutorial I'm gonna be explaining you guys some code for the game I wrote it's a traditional punk game but I named it magic poem somehow. Uh, and here I am sitting in my dorm room explaining you guys some stuff for my CS homework and let's jump straight into the video so la first let me introduce you guys the game um, Where is it? Oh. There it is. Um, it has this wonderful, pretty Christmas song. And we can play it. We hit the space and we play the game. I know that's terrible, but... Yeah, that's how you play it. And then you leave the game. And then there are scores on the top. That, like... And then you can always restart the game by clicking space. Clicking space, yeah. By... Okay, that's basically how you play the game. And then... Yeah, I think that's it. Um... Okay, I'm going to stop the game. Uh, how do I do it? I don't. I just, I just wait until the song is done. Yep, there it is. So now we go to Sublime, which is the text editor that I have the code in. Sublime text 3. Okay. So... What we have in here? Okay. Um. We have punk.html, punk.css, and punk.js. We'll start from HTML. <clears throat> so this is the basic HTML structure. What I have here different is the background image, which is in the body tag. Um. Canvas, we have canvas right here with a height 800 and 500. Uh, there is a reference to the punk.css so that we can get the CSS style for our web page. Um, and then here is the song, which is an empt tag. So, yeah. We can have hidden or not hidden. If it says hidden is equal to true, then we don't see the song bar, but yeah, we don't need it. Uh, yeah, and then here is the reference to JavaScript. That's basically it for HTML. Here we have the CSS, which isn't basically that complicated. I just have CSS for Canvas and H1. So uh, for Canvas, I just have border, margin. It's just basically the location where I want the Canvas to be on the web page. Uh, yeah, yeah, and then there is the H1, which is the, 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 what's that, the title that I had, like the magic punk, uh, text line, font family, color, font size, all that stuff, not interesting, uh, here we have the punk that, Punk.js, which basically is the code for the game. I hate the sun right now. It's like basically on my face. I don't see anything. God. Uh, so we have canvas. We have context. I don't think I need to explain all this because my TAs know this well. I don't need to explain it. Um, yeah. Okay. I have the images. So the first one is the field image, which is the, basically the, 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 what is it? Like, the snowflake stuff that ge the game was on it. The background image for the game, basically. Not for the web page for the game. That blue stuff. Game data. So we need to have a game data to store our data in. So 
here are the objects that we need for the game so basically the stick one stick two fire um yeah we do need fire uh and there those are the parameters for the objects so there are x coordinate y coordinate width height x delta and y delta for each court uh, for each um for each object then we have the game over set to false which I'm going to be switching to true every time someone loses the game it's going to switch true so I just have this initially set to false because initially no one loses the game uh, and then there's score 1, score 2 which are 0 and every time someone uh, wins the game the score is going to go up with 1 uh, then we have the key codes for the keys that we might need in a game so it's the left key, up key right key down key we don't actually need the right and left right and left we just need up down yeah i just put those like in case but we're gonna use the up and down and w and s keys here we have a function called start game uh so what i have in here is that every time start game runs the Fire's X coordinate and Y coordinate has to turn to 7 and 9, which means every time the start game function goes, that fire needs to start moving. Then we have buttons set to false or true or false. All of them are false. 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 So that every time I press the key, the false turns into true. If it makes sense. Uh, then there's the function collision, which, so this function needs to go every time, like every time my code calls the update data function, it has to check if there is a collision between two objects. So two objects might be the um, stick one and the fire or stick two and the fire. So we can see that every time a stick hits the fire, the fire has to change its direction and go like another way. Uh, so the collision, um, I didn't do it a circle and the rectangle because my stick is a rectangle and the fire is actually a circle. Uh, it was like uh, just to save time, I just considered both of them to be rectangles and I just did the collision stuff to as rectangles. So it just um, checks if the x is less than object 2, x plus its width same thing for like all the sides just like basic collision between two objects two rectangles okay so where are we at then we have the ad event listener thing which understands every time i press a key what's gonna happen so every time uh, if the event code is equal to the up key, the buttons dot up key, which we had that right over here, buttons dot up key, which is here, which is false, it turns into true. Here, it turns into true. That's obvious. And I did it for like every single key that I might be using. And there is the space. 32 with the space. Yeah. Uh huh. So every time we click the space, it's going to understand that it has to call the start game function. And every time the start game function was called, um, the fire was getting that x delta and y delta stuff. So yeah, next we have, what do we have? Yeah, this one is for the key down and we have the same thing for key up so that every time we press the key and it's down, it turns the buttons to true. But like if we uh, do the up key, it has to switch it to false again. It can't stay true all the time. There's a one function which takes player as an argument. And what it does is that uh, fires x and y delta does turn to zero and then the fire dot x which basically means that every time someone wins the fire has to come to a location and it can't stay there like 
so a new game starts and the fire has to come to somewhere over here so the x coordinate is like right in the middle of the canvas right where the border well, not the border yeah just the middle of the canvas but the y coordinate is right random yeah like random anywhere in the middle so that it can be fair for both the players and every time the one function um every time someone wins players score has to go up one one up yeah. uh so what the update data function does is that it checks a lot of things for example it checks if the buttons are true or false if they're true then it does whatever we tell them to so for example if we press the up key it checks if the um every time we run the update function update data function it has to check check cho it has to check if the key is true if it's true then the sticks y coordinate has to um has to go down with the white delta so every time we press the up key the stick has to go up the same for all the keys yeah and then this is the winning condition if the fire's x is less than equal to stick one's width then the uh then the then the second stick wins so the second stick's score has to go up with one um same for the uh, same for the stick one. So those are the winning conditions for two sticks. Then there is the collision thing. If there is a collision between fire and stick two, or collision between stick one and fire, then the fire's x delta has to change its direction. So times negative one, which means that if it was seven, it has to become negative seven. So yeah, same for the same for the for the What's that? Same for the white delta. Yeah. Uh, now what else do we have? Yeah, and again, fires x um, x has to grow with x delta, and then fires y has to grow with y delta. Uh, we have the draw function. So the draw function basically draws every single image that we had initially on the top of our JS right here. So we had those as constants, but here the draw function basically draws them on the canvas, right? It finds a source, downloads it, and it draws it on the canvas. So we have the field, uh, x coordinate, one co y coordinate, width and a height. Then there is the stick one, stick two, fire. Uh, here we have the stuff for the text that has the score on it. I just did this stuff so that the score can be right in the middle just you know adjusting it so that the score can be right in the middle of the canvas and then every time we have like um okay so let's say the score is 9 8 if the 9 turns to 10 the score was going like it was shifting but I needed the um I needed the line between them to be right in the middle so that now using this context.measure text and all this, right this line over here, um, it just makes the line to be right in the middle of the canvas and then whatever digits that score has, it stays in the middle and is not changing and not shifting, shifting, yeah. Uh, then we have the loop function. Loop function is basically what makes the game a game. So loop function calls the update data function to check the state of the game every single time we call loop function. And it um, draws the stuff that we have in the draw function. So it calls the draw function. Then we have request animation frame, which has the loop so it waits for a little bit and then it calls loop again and then waits for a little bit and calls loop again so what it does is called is that it calls loop over and over again which makes the animation stuff and then uh right in the at the end we have the loop function which which um yeah which calls the loop function which does all this stuff so yeah basically that was it so that was it for today's video uh i hope you guys enjoyed it and let me know if you like the game comment down below put your thumbs up subscribe to the channel definitely 
and see you guys next time so guys now i'm gonna interview carefully and maria lick and we're gonna see if they like the game <laughs> 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 It's not fair. It's not fair. It's not fair. It's